Hey everyone, me Kevin here. Oh, oh my gosh, I just watched the Don Lemon versus Elon Musk interview and it was a versus. I I don't blame Elon for being pissed about this interview. We're going to go through it in detail here. I'm going to be as unbiased and neutral as possible, but oh, Don there were some issues with this interview style. I'm going to explain those from a fact-based point of view. Keep in mind, there's been a lot of drama going into this interview. Elon Musk apparently canceled uh, some form of exclusivity contract for Don Lemon that was being negotiated. Don Lemon apparently was de uh, demanding uh, an $8 million salary, private jet trips to Vegas, massages and drinks being paid for, day drinks being paid for. Oh, who knows? We, we don't know the full scope of this negotiation. Don Lemon did say that Elon Elon Musk was trying to woo him. So we're not sure was Don demanding those things? Did he suggest things that Elon was open to doing? We have we really no idea. But what we do know is what we can see, and that is the Don Lemon versus Elon Musk interview. And again, in this video, I'm going to give you a summary of all of it. So let's just get into it. First, uh, Giga Texas was the fastest construction uh, since construction rather since World War II, uh, and X is a useful platform for real time news. This is kind of how we get started, kind of really starting on some basic observations here, okay? But then things like literally three bullet points in get awkward. Elon's like, you know, the thing about X is we want people from all points of view. We've got people like Tucker more on the right, Fox News on the right, CNN on the left. Don goes, why would you say that? That CNN is on the left. And, and Elon's like, what? <laughs> like, who doesn't think CNN leads left? I, I, and I think we can, of course, say that is very much the mainstream opinion that CNN is going to have a left lean. I, I think we could say that with almost certainty. Of course, we can't say with 100% certainty because I'm sure there are some people at CNN that are trying to be as unbiased as possible, right? But let's be clear. They have their tilts. So this was a really weird way to start an interview, trying to essentially debate something off the start that like, bro, like, A, who cares? And B, why why are we starting out arguing about this? And so Elon's like, uh, am I missing something here? Anyway, we get into record usage on X, that advertisers are coming back to X. The problem is before Elon says 99% of donations by Twitter employees were to the left and that ended up leading to what he believes a censorship tilt that 10x outweighed the level of censorship against those on the right and he thinks that's unfair. He doesn't stand for censorship and instead says, look, we should just treat the law the way it is, whatever the law says we should do, we should do. Don Lemon's interview style starts out very 20 questions-esque. I actually think he's hurt by having these cue cards or flashcards because it makes the interview feel less uh, casual and more like a confrontational interrogation. So I think uh, advice to Don Lemon, get rid of the cue cards. Sometimes I go into an interview with an iPad uh, and that's mostly because sometimes when people are sharing their ideas, they can go off into many different tangents in the span of one response. And so I like to kind of write down what people are saying so I could build on what they're saying. But going in with prepped, like I might have topics written down, but going in with prepped cue cards, okay, we gotta get through all this stuff. It creates rapid fire, it creates interrogation, it creates confrontation. I don't think this is a really good idea. It wasn't a good way for Don Lemon to show the world, hey, come do an interview with me. It's a little intense, let's just say. And I'm not saying Elon can't handle intensity. I'm not here to say, oh, he's a baby, he can't handle it. It's just, it's just not very productive. It hurts the actual outcome of the interview when somebody can't share the free flow of ideas because maybe there's a time pressure and you got to get through all your cue cards. Anyway, Elon says Cybertruck is a once a decade uh, product. The Tesla Roadster that uh, will be announced in the future, which we've already heard of in the past, will be a quote collaboration between SpaceX and Tesla. Don says flying car. Elon's kind of kind of goes maybe. He's sort of playing with this here. And then says, look, it'll have some rocket technology. It won't really have wings or propellers, but it will have wheels and a yoke. So uh, that information has kind of already been known that we're looking at the next roadster to be zero to 60 in less than one second. It's really the idea of can you floor it and get rocket propelled to where you get this sort of instantaneous movement to speed and then the vehicle takes over speed. We've already known that, so this wasn't really a groundbreaking drop. 
Elon says he likes to play video games, specifically Diablo. He sees video games as player versus environment and Twitter as player versus player, PvP. Now that's really interesting because for me personally, I actually don't like PvE. I'm a big fan of PvP in video games, whether it's Rust or World of Warcraft or RuneScape. Though I will say I did also like PvE questing and my dailies and wow, mm, love dailies. Anyway, I, I don't play anymore. Well, wow, that is. Anyway, Elon says he's almost always sober, that he doesn't drink much. He does, however, take a ketamine prescription and he believes that's very useful for getting out of a negative state of mind and that people should consider talking to their doctor about ketamine which is a regulated drug known for helping resolve medical issues. He does say that it's rare for him to take a day off. Maybe uh, he'll use ketamine once every few weeks, but sometimes he'll go several without. And ultimately, what matters for Wall Street is execution, and he's going to focus on executing. Then we get into the Electoral College. There's sort of a debate over here. Elon says, look, the Electoral College amplifies blue states. Don Lemon says, no, it amplifies small states, which could be red states. Elon says, look, all I'm saying is that illegal immigrants are counted in the census. Fact check, this is true. All people are counted in the census. In fact, the state of Connecticut has a piece out on their website that says the census counts every person living in the country, citizens, non-citizens, and those in holding permanent resident cards. Excluding the immigrant population, even illegal, uh, from the uh, decennial census count only cheats them out of the resources and representation they deserve or are entitled to. Okay, obviously this is going to create a lot of debate. A lot of people don't think that illegal immigrants are entitled to AB here because hence illegal uh, or are entitled to resources. So there's a debate here. But if the census counts illegal immigrants, then yes, it can actually boost the number of house seats a state has that caters potentially to illegal immigrants. For example, right now we have about 761,000 residents per house seat in Congress. I believe Elon is trying to reference a Fox News article from memory here. I found it. I've linked it all, including this full summary over at ehack.com. Ehack.com. That's where I just, myself and my team, we post our sort of free uh, research. We try to be as unbiased as possible. I really never want somebody to think of eHack as, oh, there's a tilt. In fact, I love it when people are debating like, he's right, he's left, he's right, he's left. It's like, ah, I'm getting an equal amount on both sides. Yes. Again, I, I'm really just trying to provide facts because I'm, I'm sort of married to the idea of fact finding. I, I love it. I find it so entertaining. I, I, much like Elon, love the truth. Now, that doesn't mean I don't think that Elon can sometimes do some things that are a little shystery, but then again, everybody does, okay? So, uh, now, as far as this argument over uh, the Electoral College, Don Lemon, I think, makes another interview mistake here. And there, okay, so cue cards was interview mistake number one with peppering questions, right? Interview mistake number two, passive aggressive. They're debating about the Electoral College. And then what does uh, um, Don Lemon do? He does this. Okay, well, I don't think you're right. Next question. And starts reading the next question. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Y you can't just, like, you could let somebody speak and then move on. But to say, to let somebody speak and then go, well, I think you're wrong. Let's move on. <sighs> it's, it's a very aggressive style. I would recommend that Don Lemon change that as soon as possible. No cue cards. Chill, man. Let people talk. Sometimes people get mad at me for not, like, countering people in interviews. No, 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 no. The time to do that is separately. And you could slightly, you know, move people into the direction of deeper curiosity. But getting mad just makes people want to cut the interview short, like Elon does twice. We'll talk about that in just a moment. Uh, and uh, ultimately, the viewer ends up with less perspective from the person. So you're net losing that way. Anyway. Elon says Democrats have the incentive to let immigrants in. And uh, then we get into talking about sort of great replacement theory. Elon says the media is a terrible judge of character. Don then tries to go down this rabbit hole, which he almost does for the rest of the interview, which is why I didn't really like this interview. It's like, well, don't you have a responsibility to moderate the truth? And what Don's really setting up is, hey, you're a big, powerful person with a big social media platform. Isn't it incumbent upon you to moderate the truth and make sure we don't have racism and hate speech in the country? And Elon's like, look, I care. That's why we have community notes. We care about the truth, but we're only going to take things down to that are illegal. That's not going to change the fact that the internet is full of hate speech. Just play Rust and you'll see hate speech all the time. And a lot of spite. <laughs> that game is the definition of spite. Elon then gets into, look, you agree with censorship. I don't agree with censorship. You can't shut down the internet. Don says, no, I want you to take responsibility. And then Elon says, fine, then change the law. Don says, well, there should be guardrails. Elon argues, then change the law. 
It's a good point. It's a very clear stance from Elon and you have to respect it. Look, we'll follow the law. If you want more than the law, change the law. It's not a bad argument. It's a really good argument for free speech by Elon here. I don't think you can poop on Elon for this one. However, Don keeps going. Next, we get into diversity, equity, and inclusion. And there's this discussion that basically if you take people who have lower medical test scores, you might end up causing more death and malpractice in the medical field because you're trying to promote diversity rather than higher test scores. This comes from a discussion that's been circulating for a while. There's actually a Wall Street Journal piece on this. It's called the National Institute for Health Sacrifices Scientific Rigor for Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. That is an op-ed, so it is an opinion piece. But in it, they'd say that uh, Cornell University, along with Berkeley and other universities, emphasize their applicants, quote, contribution to diversity, and that people will receive significant, or, or sorry, that their DEI statements, quote, will receive significant weight in the evaluation, and that you pr uh, penalize applicants who espouse colorblind equality and ultimately give lower tests or give ultimately lower applicant scores to those who want to treat everyone the same with equality. Okay, there's some really big problems here that we really have to kind of break apart. First of all, it's, it's unclear if we can say with certainty that people are getting into uh, medical positions with lower scores. We cannot say that with certainty, but it is implied. When, it's, when, when you say that you are going to give significant weight to somebody's DEI statement over somebody, and you actually penalize somebody, so you give somebody bonus for a good DEI statement and penalize them for saying they want equality, what you're doing is you're creating a wedge that could overstep somebody else's slightly lower test scores. So let's say somebody gets a 90 and somebody else gets an 87. It is possible that the person with the 87 gets accepted. While it's still good, it's not the 90, it's not the A, because they had a better DEI score. Now, that is strongly implied. It is strongly implied that it's happening. I wanna be clear, it probably is happening. Can I say with 100% certainty it's happening? No, because of course, there's always a small percentage chance that it's not happening. I think it probably is though, when you have statements like this. Now, Don does hit on this. He says, there's no evidence of lowering standards. Yes, Don can be right here, but Elon can also be right. It can be correct that if we do lower standards, more people could die. Yes, that is true. There's no evidence of lowering standards. That is also possibly true. Both of these could be true, but that doesn't actually make either of them, Don or Elon wrong. And this is a lot of what we have the entire interview is whether it's Don's questions or Elon's responses, they're kind of both on their own soapbox, talking to their own audience. It's like Elon Musk is talking over here to his audience. He likes censorship. And Don Lemon's over here going, he's a racist. And, and everybody's kind of cheering their own leader as opposed to them having a conversation. It really felt like uh, each person had a megaphone just appealing to their side without really trying to bridge. Though I will say, I think, given that Elon was the one having to answer the questions here, he did really well at getting through this one hour long interview. He did really well at that. Uh, now, and he did try to push it along. We'll talk about that in just a moment. Now, uh, so uh, then Don says, shouldn't you fact check something before you post on Twitter something that isn't true or on X? Elon says, well, other people fact check me. That's a cop out on Elon. So I have to say that's bad, Elon. You can't do that. If you, if, if you think something's wrong, maybe go a step beyond just to check it before you post it. Or if you're not sure if something's right, maybe go a step further. Don't rely on people to comment reply. That would be like saying, I'll just make whatever videos I want on YouTube and I'll spout whatever BS I want because people will just fact check me. No, 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 no. I think that the first responsibility should be upon the user and it could then be further substantiated or fact checked by others. Uh, Elon says a diversity, equity, and inclusion could become an issue if we do lower standards. I agree, uh, and, and I think everybody agrees with this. Don then goes into talking about why are there fewer black and uh, fewer female pilots, uh, and Elon says, look, I'm not here to argue that uh, the, why there are fewer uh, black or why there are fewer female pilots or doctors. All Elon is saying, we should just treat everybody the same going forward. Yes, there's been racism, in history, at some point, every country was probably racist. And Elon goes as far as saying at some point, everybody was a slave at some point or the descendant of some form of slave. 
I don't think Elon here is trying to offend uh, the black community or any particular community. I think Elon's just like, let's just focus on going forward rather than having this argument. So Don is arguing on his soapbox, systemic racism is bad. Elon's like, yes, it's bad, but let's focus on going forward. So again, arguing two different things. Elon says, just focus on people's skills and talents. That's it. Don't try to blame everything on race and gender. In fact, goes as far as saying that is unfair. Make life about people, not about race and gender. I, hands off to Elon on that one. Absolutely. Don goes into, well, I've been discriminated against. And Elon's like, well, but you're successful. Okay, none of this matters. None of this matters. Okay, just because Don maybe is successful in, in some, you know, in the way some people view him, uh, great. Uh, and uh, just because Elon's successful, uh, you know, it, like these are case studies that don't matter. What matters is broadly, do people have equal opportunity? And look, I think there are fair arguments to say no. People don't have equal opportunity. You could say, hey, look, in the 1950s, uh, a black child that was raised by a poor family is probably going to have a lower chance at actually becoming a doctor or pilot because they don't have the money or resources to train or get educated to achieve at the levels that are required. So yes, you can argue structural racism. Okay, so that doesn't change Elon's argument though, that let's treat everybody equally going forward. That's Elon's argument. Boeing comes up. Boeing comes up as uh, basically this piece of like, hey, why are they promoting DEI? Almost every company is promoting DEI. This is true though. If you do look at uh, ehack.com, you'll see the post. And quickly, I want to mention before I put this post up from ehack that uh, if you have not yet gotten your life insurance in as little as five minutes, go to metkevin.com slash life. Five minutes. You get Apple Pay or Android for it. If you want to trade stocks, follow me. Get all my buy, sell alerts. Check out metkevin.com or go to meetkevin.com uh, and you'll see the courses on building your wealth. Stocks and Psych has trade alerts. Uh, and also pay attention to that event we have coming in June, innovation, finance, and a lot of real estate, June 21st to 23rd. Okay, let's look at that Boeing piece right here. Boeing's aspirations. Oh, those are my notes. Sorry, that's the wrong button. There we go, right here. Uh, Boeing's aspirations. This is under their DEI section, so it's only about DEI. But as you can see, they have very clear DEI aspirations. Increase black representation, achieve parity and retention rates up, up, uh, across all groups. You know, you don't see anything here about having lower standards. These are just goals that they have. I don't necessarily think it's wrong for them to have these goals as long as the standards aren't changed for safety at Boeing, especially the disasters that Boeing has been going through, uh, have been going through, ha Boeing has been going through the disaster that, well, they have had a lot of disasters, whatever. I'm lost on the grammar there. Uh, anyway, Elon then says, look, you're upsetting me with the way you're phrasing questions. If we're bringing free speech and we br make less money, so be it. But choose your questions carefully. We have five minutes left. You can choose to advertise next to whatever you want on Twitter or X. You have the opportunity to choose with the tools we have at X. This is a fair response from Elon. Don says, where does your intensity come from? Elon says, I was born that way. Only a couple minutes left. One or two questions left, Don. He goes, look, I'm, I'm not trying to upset you. Elon's like, look, I gotta go. I got a room of people waiting for me. He's so over this. He's so over this. And uh, Elon ends with, look, my goal is to extend consciousness, make life multi-planetary. I've made many mistakes, and if I had a time machine, I'd go back and fix them. Good job, Elon. I think great job, Elon. Big interview mistakes by Don Lemon. Let's summarize it. Get rid of the cue cards. Stop peppering your people but when, when you're interviewing. Okay, that's, that's number one. Number two, you can't cut people off with your opinion. Number three, big mistake. We get it. You believe there's structural racism. But trying to gotcha Elon into trying to, you know, imply or even suggest that he's racist or, or focusing this whole interview about DEI and race, this was a waste of time. Advertise these things that you told us here. I feel like nobody else knows about this. We'll, we'll try a little advertising and see how it goes. Congratulations, man. You have done so much. People love you. People look up to you. Kevin Pafrath there, financial analyst and YouTuber. Meet Kevin. Always great to get your take. Even though I'm a licensed financial advisor, licensed real estate broker, and becoming a stockbroker, this video is not personalized advice for you. It is not tax, legal, or otherwise personalized advice tailored to you. This video provides generalized perspective, information, and commentary. Any third-party content I show shall not be deemed endorsed by me. This video is not and shall never be deemed reasonably sufficient information for the purposes of evaluating a security or investment decision. Any links or promoted products are either paid affiliations or products or services we may benefit from. I also personally operate an actively managed ETF. I may personally hold or otherwise hold long 
long or short positions in various securities, potentially including those mentioned in this video. However, I have no relationship to any issuer other than Hausack, nor am I presently acting as a market maker. Make sure if you're considering investing in Hausack to always read the PPM at Hausack.com.